religions in this world proclaims that the god has created human beings but our evolutionary science is saying that human beings have come from monkeys which one should i believe in what do you feel closer to <laughs> so if you are going in forward gear go with darwin if you are in reverse gear go with god these are two different ways of doing the same thing Most of the religions in this world proclaims that the god has created human beings but our evolutionary science is saying that human beings have come from monkeys which one should i believe in what do you feel closer to <laughs> being a human i think that i have evolved from humans <laughs> say uh, if you are someone who is on a reverse gear then you must choose the first one your religious people telling you you came from god because you're going in the direction better not go in the direction of a monkey go back to god but if you're planning to evolve then better go with darwin because is there room for evolution for you or are you super evolved already i'm asked there is a room for evolution ah huh? there is room for evolution if there is room for evolution that means there is a possibility that you can become a better man than what you are today so if you are going in forward gear go with darwin if you are in reverse gear go with god <laughs> yes because if you want to go on that path that needs devotion devotion means the word devotion comes from the word dissolution you want to dissolve into your object of your your object of devotion whatever it is you want to dissolve into it So in a way it is a way of making yourself less and less and less so that you become nothing literally it's a wonderful way to live it is not sounding good when you speak in language that you want to become less and less no when you become really nothing you become limitless also so devotion is one way to go but you don't have that because you gone through little bit of modern education and you beginning to think logically now if you think logically naturally you can see life has evolved on this planet there's no question about that so if you want to go forward you must see just behind you is the monkey one step backward you will be right there better you move forward quickly because some of the scientists are saying today that the dna difference between you and a chimpanzee is only 1.23%. 1.23% is not much of a difference, isn't it? <laughs> so, one point if you're not happy with 1.23%, you must accelerate your evolution. The entire system of yoga is just this, how to accelerate your evolution in every dimension of who you are. How to hasten this process? Now that you're talking about evolution, Whatever Charles Darwin said a goat could have become a giraffe it took so many million years a pig could have become an elephant and it took so many million years and a monkey became a man and it happened rather quickly to such a point anthropologists are saying that there must be a missing link somewhere it happened rather very quickly so now if evolution happened When you were a monkey you did not desire i want to be a human being there was no such desire in you nature just pushed you on it's just life's longing it's not a conscious thing it's just life's longing to get better from an amoeba to here just imagine the volume of work that's been done incredible isn't it whatever amount of time it took from a single celled creature to the human being what a tremendous amount of work has been done but now you have been rendered in a space where your evolution has to be conscious 15000 years ago over 15000 years ago adi yogi said this when his seven sages asked the seven disciples asked this question how did life happen you have heard of the nine avatars what are they Matsya, Kurma, Varaha, Vamana, 
ನರಸಿಂಹ ಪರಶುರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬುದ್ಧ ಕಲ್ಕಿ so please uh, look at what he is saying this is very much in parallel with what charles darwin is saying first is fish matsya avatara next is amphibious turtle then he is skipping all the other small forms and coming to the mammals the first mammal we are talking about a boar or a pig the hardest animal to kill is always a boar because it's so rooted in the body even today if you behave badly the girls will say he is like a pig yes or no <laughs> so if something is very crude you say it's like a pig so first animal mammal is the pig what's next narasimha narasimha means half man half animal next is vamana means a dwarfed man next is parashurama a full fledged man but explosive and uncontrolled volatile next one is rama a peaceful man next one is krishna a loving man an exuberant man next one is buddha who is a meditative man next one is supposed to be a mystical man this is not about those individual people this is just these people are being used as milestones this is the nature of development of life in many ways this is running parallel to darwin's theory of evolution darwin's theory of evolution is only 152 years old adiyogi spoke about this over 15000 years ago and and then naturally the next question is can we evolve further because you find you find right now when you want to study for your examination you wish you had a little more brain hello does it happen or no so naturally question can i evolve further if a single celled animal can become this much can i go further so adi yogi said this this is modern neurologists are saying the very same thing in a different language adi yogi said considering the nature of the solar system and the arithmetic the way the planet the moon the sun these three are very important this is why the entire yogic system is around these three aspects these three have significant roles unless something fundamental about the solar system changes he said your body cannot evolve further but you can evolve consciously when we say we can evolve consciously i can show you or we can take you as an experiment if you will we can put you on something and show you that your very fundamental genetics will change within a matter of 3 to 9 months by doing certain things with your system if you know if you are willing to give yourself to a certain discipline your very genetics can be altered your level of intelligence can be changed the way you experience life can be changed so he said you can evolve consciously but physically you cannot evolve unless something about the planetary system changes modern neurologists are saying something very similar so if you're going forward choose darwin if you want to go backwards backwards is not a bad place if you want to go backwards don't think backwards is a negative thing no if you want to dissolve you go towards god if you want to evolve this is one way these are two different ways of doing the same thing Dear seekers, in the vast expanse of our existence, where does the journey of spiritual evolution begin, and where does it lead us? What markers along the path signify that we are indeed evolving, not just in mind or body, but in spirit? And how do we discern the difference between mere intellectual understanding and true spiritual awakening? Spiritual evolution is not a journey of accumulating knowledge, but rather a process of profound transformation and awakening. It's akin to the metamorphosis of a caterpillar into a butterfly, a transformation so radical that it brings about an entirely new way of being. This evolution involves shedding layers of ego, 
societal conditioning, and illusionary perceptions of separation. It requires us to look within, to the very core of our being, and to recognize that at our essence, we are not the roles we play, the thoughts we think, or the emotions we feel. In the everyday life context, consider the difference between reacting to a situation from a place of ego, where the primary concern is self-interest, and responding from a place of consciousness, where there is an awareness of the interconnectedness of all life. The ego might react to a conflict with anger, seeking to defend and assert itself. However, as one evolves spiritually, there is a shift towards responding with understanding and compassion, recognizing the other person's perspective and the unity underlying all interactions. Spiritual evolution is marked by moments of deep insight and realizations that feel like coming home. These are moments when the chatter of the mind quiets down, and one is fully present in the now, experiencing a profound peace and connectedness with all that is. These moments are often described as glimpses of enlightenment, where one realizes their true nature beyond the physical and mental realms. The path of spiritual evolution is unique for each individual, yet it is also universal in its milestones of awakening, love, and compassion. It is a path that requires courage, for it involves confronting our deepest fears and letting go of everything we've clung to for security. But it is also a path of immense beauty, for it leads to a liberation of spirit, a boundless love, and a deep peace that surpasses all understanding. Recognizing the essence of our spiritual journey is vital for real transformation. It is in the realization that we are not merely human beings having a spiritual experience, but spiritual beings having a human experience, that we unlock the door to true evolution. This understanding shifts our perspective from one of separation and limitation to one of unity and limitless potential. It is here, in the recognition of our true nature, that we find the key to not just personal transformation but the evolution of consciousness itself. The journey of spiritual evolution is a return to our essence, a reawakening to our true nature as limitless, eternal beings. It is a path that leads us to the heart of existence, to the realization of our oneness with all that is. And it is in this realization that we find not only peace and liberation for ourselves but become conduits of light and love, contributing to the evolution of the collective consciousness. Dear Seekers, as we delve deeper into the essence of spiritual evolution, let us reflect upon the interconnectedness of our journey with the world around us. How does our inner transformation impact the collective consciousness? And how does the state of the world influence our individual paths? Our spiritual evolution is not an isolated process, it is intrinsically linked to the collective evolution of humanity. Each individual awakening contributes to a shift in the collective consciousness, like a single drop of water creating ripples across a vast ocean. This interconnectedness means that our personal growth and enlightenment are not just for our own benefit but serve as a beacon of light for others. As we transform, we inspire transformation in those around us, creating a domino effect of awakening across the globe. Consider the impact of a single individual who embodies peace, love, and understanding. Their very presence can transform the energy of a room, a community, or even beyond. They become a living testament to the potential within each of us for profound change and harmony. This is how powerful our individual journeys are, they have the capacity to inspire change on a global scale. Moreover, the challenges and turmoil we observe in the world are not merely obstacles to our personal peace, they are calls to action, invitations for us to bring forth our inner light and contribute to the healing of the world. Every act of kindness, every moment of genuine connection, every stance for justice and truth contributes to the elevation of the collective consciousness. In this way, our spiritual evolution is deeply woven into the fabric of global transformation. In facing the world's challenges, 
we are presented with opportunities to practice compassion, understanding, and resilience. These experiences not only accelerate our personal evolution but also enable us to contribute to a collective shift towards a more conscious, loving, and peaceful world. It is in our hands to be the change we wish to see, to influence the collective consciousness through our thoughts, words, and actions. The path of spiritual evolution is, therefore, a journey of both personal transformation and collective healing. It calls us to look beyond our individual experiences and recognize our role in the larger tapestry of existence. By aligning our personal growth with the greater good, we not only find deeper meaning and purpose in our own lives but also contribute to the unfolding of a more conscious, compassionate world. Dear Seekers, recognizing the interconnectedness of our spiritual journey with the collective evolution is essential for real transformation. It is through this understanding that we can truly embrace our potential not only as individuals but as integral parts of a larger whole. Our individual awakenings are not the end goal but rather stepping stones towards the collective awakening of humanity. This realization is the key to unlocking not only personal liberation but also to contributing to the evolution of consciousness itself. In this way, our spiritual evolution becomes a shared journey, a collective endeavor towards a brighter, more enlightened world.